The vocabulary that you need to know and be aware of as we go through this video lesson is air pressure, convection current, wind, Coriolis effect, and global winds. When you see these words and take notes on them in your notebook, make sure you underline these key words. The sun heats the earth unequally, as you can see in the diagram below. Regions near the equator are very warm because they get direct sunlight. Regions near the poles are very cold because they get indirect sunlight. The unequal heating of the earth causes differences in air pressure. Air pressure is the weight of the air. This diagram is showing you that warm air is less dense and it's going to rise while cold air is more dense and it's going to sink. This circular movement is called a convection current. We've talked about convection currents in other parts of our earth science. We've talked about convection, convection currents in the magma that's in our mantle of earth. We've talked about convection currents in our ocean currents and now we're seeing convection currents that are forming wind. You can see real life convection currents when you have a heater distributing hot air into a room and the cold air will sink down. This is showing us that cold air has high pressure and it sinks down because it's dense. Warm air has low pressure and it rises up because it's less dense. Unequal heating of the Earth's surface affects the air. Looking at this diagram, you can see the red molecules are showing the ground heating up the air, causing the molecules to move faster and spread apart. The blue dots are showing that the air is cold and the molecules are coming together, becoming more dense. Therefore, cold air is dense, so it sinks. Warm air is less dense, so it rises. This same sort of thing happens when you're looking at the equator and the poles of Earth. Cold, dense air from the, from the poles forming an area of high pressure. So at the poles of the Earth, you can look at the diagram, we have cold air, which means there is high pressure at the poles due to the cold air. Therefore, cold air, cold air equals high pressure. Warm, less dense air forms at the equator, creating areas of low pressure. So what you want to associate is warm air equals low pressure because you're thinking of these molecules rising up in the air and spreading out. So here's a thinking question. Why does the shower curtain cling to you when you're taking a shower? Well, the reason this happens is because the water in the shower is hot and causes that air in the shower to rise because it's warm. So that air in the shower has less pressure because it has warm air, it's rising. Well, the air outside of the shower is cold and that cold air moves in to take the place of the warm air. So you basically you have a small convection current that goes on in the bathroom as you take a shower, causing the curtain to cling to your body. Therefore, air moves from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. This can also be seen in the example of the heater in a room. And this is also seen with our weather patterns. Whenever we have weather movement, weather moves or air masses move from areas of high pressure and take the place of areas with low pressure. How winds develop. 
Wind is the moving air caused by differences in air pressure. Air moves from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. The greater the pressure difference, the faster the air moves and the stronger the winds blow. Air rises at the equator and sinks at the pole. As the cold air sinks, it creates areas of high pressure around the poles. This cold polar air then flows towards the equator. The air moves in large convection patterns called convection cells, which are just like convection currents. So therefore, if you look at the equator, we have areas of low pressure because we have warm air rising. And at the poles, we have area of high pressure because we have cold air sinking. So we're trying to apply this sinking and rising pattern in our convection current to global winds, how the wind moves around the Earth. According to the Coriolis effect, basically it says that because the Earth rotates, the Earth also makes the wind and water rotate. If you look at the diagram, the green arrow is showing you the rotation of the Earth on its axis. The black arrows are showing you the path of the wind without the Coriolis effect. So if we didn't have the Earth spinning, our winds would simply go from the poles straight to the equator. However, because our Earth rotates, our wind moves in a curved path. So the purple lines are showing you the curvature of the wind as the Earth moves. The Coriolis effect is simply the rotation of the Earth causing moving air and water to change direction. The northern hemisphere winds curve to the right from the direction they are traveling. Southern hemisphere winds curve to the left from the direction they are traveling. When you're looking at global winds, it's good to remember our cardinal directions. We have north, south, east, and west. So if you look at the winds, our winds are actually named by the direction that they come from. So looking at the globe, you can see that the polar easterlies, they actually start at the east. So if you look at the one in the northern hemisphere, they start at the east and they move to the west. Same thing in the southern hemisphere, those winds start at the east and move to the west. Therefore, they're called easterlies. The next set of winds are called prevailing westerlies. These winds start at the west and move to the east. Therefore, they're called westerlies. Just like in the southern hemisphere, they start at the west and move in the direction of the east, being called westerlies. For global winds, they don't travel north and south. Global winds are curved because the Earth's rotating on its axis, which we call the Coriolis effect. There are three types of global winds. Trade winds, which are in the middle nearest the equator. Prevailing winds, which are represented on purple on the globe in front of you. And polar easterlies, which are at the north and south pole. Our polar easterlies are winds in the belts that extend from the poles to 60 degrees latitude in both hemispheres. They form as cold sinking air moves away from the poles. 
that can carry cold Arctic air over the U.S., which can provide, pro sorry, which can produce snow and freezing weather. The prevailing westerlies are the wind belts found between 30 degrees and 60 degrees latitude in both hemispheres. They blow towards the pole from west to east. These winds can carry moisture, sorry, can carry moist air of the United States producing rain and snow. The trade winds are the winds that blow from 30 degrees latitude almost to the equator in both hemispheres. They curve to the east as they blow toward the equator. To help you summarize this information, there are five questions to help you focus in on what you need to know for this lesson. Take a moment to go through each question and try to answer it on your own first. In just a minute, I will put the answers up here for you to check your work. 